really nervous right now. <laughs> We're family, don't be nervous. We're family. Okay, so um, I just want to thank John personally for uh, he gave me this invitation um, to preach, and so thank you. But uh, I want to tell you how I got there. So I was working with my dad one day. Well, not with my dad, with a friend, and we were back here near the fellowship hall. And I was just working, and then John just comes out of nowhere, and he greets us, and we say hi to each other and everything. And he tells me, um, would you like to preach? And in my mind, I'm a, of course not. I get really nervous, six to my skin or sometimes, so it's not for me, I said. And he just came out and said, well, just remember who you're preaching for. It gets, and remember who you, who you're, uh, you're working for. And he said, you're working for God. And I thought about it, and I was like, well, of course, you know, how am I going to back away from, the, from this opportunity? And um, on the other hand, I also set a goal for myself to become a better speaker and, like, conquer my fear of stage fright and nervousness. So, thank you again, Mom. Appreciate it. So, my, uh, my sermon for God, for you guys, um, is over 2 Timothy, and it says, this one text, Be diligent, present yourself approved to God, a worker who, does, who doesn't need to be ashamed. A worker who does, doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. So how do we get to there? This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. How do we be diligent to present ourselves towards God, be a worker, and be firm in our foundation in teaching the word of truth? So, okay. so I go here to chapter 1, verse, verse 1 through verse 5. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Christ, Christ Jesus by God's will, with the promise of life in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly loved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, remembering your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. So who here is knows Paul, or, or read about him. Can I, anybody can raise your hand? Okay. What was he doing before he was, before he was spreading the gospel of God? He was persecuting the Jews. <clears throat> persecuting, right? And God called him, and now he's, he's imprisoned right now, and he's writing something. Does anybody know what he's writing, or who he's writing to? Timothy, right? He's writing to Timothy. And he says, I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience. I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, remembering your tears, I long to see you. So this sounds, this letter that he's writing, it sounds very loving, very intimate. Timothy had been shadowing uh, Paul for years, months, however many, I don't know. I didn't research that, but um, they, they've been together for a long time, and he's been mentoring him, because that's exactly what Timothy wanted to do, is to spread the gospel to everybody. So, they have a, a connection with each other. It says, clearly recalling your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. And I am convinced is in you also. So he, so Paul is convinced that he has the faith and the foundation just as Paul does. <clears throat> so Paul right now, he's in this prison. Does anybody know what kind of prison he's in? Or what the name of it's called? Never, never mind. The what? Never mind in general. Yes, yes. Oh wow, that's nice. I like that. No, it's not nice. It's not? <laughs> no, it, okay. was, and it was cleaned up. And it, was it was cleaned up, yes. It was, it was not a pretty place no, for... Uh, it for small. Very small. It was not a pretty place for Paul. 
It wasn't like the kind of um, prison that we have today, where we have cells, working toilets, a pillow, and some and a blanket. No, this was a cold stone uh, sepulcher, of what, what it was called, a sepulcher at prison. Um, and well, I did some more research on this, and they said that when they would go in there, people would be eaten by rats. So let that paint a mental picture in that for you. So Paul was in this prison. <clears throat> he was writing a letter to Timothy saying, I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience. Um, with a clear conscience, is, conscience as my ancestors did, when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. So he's saying this to Timothy, uh, telling him about how he was so, how, how he longs to see him, how, he's, how he misses him, and how he's recalling his, his faith that is in his grandmother and that he believes it's in him too. <clears throat> so now I'm going to move on to verse 6. Therefore I remind you to keep ablaze the gift of God that is in you through the laying of my hand. Through the laying of my hand, meaning that I have mentored you. You have been with me this whole time, and I am, I know that you have that fire in you to continue um, teaching the Word of God. Well, God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and of sound judgment. And that's one of my favorite texts. This is why I have, you know, fearless near death. Because Paul is not fe fearing death. He's, he's, with, uh, he's with God. And he's telling Timothy, hey, it's okay. God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and of sound judgment. Amen. But do not be ashamed, he says, of the testimony of our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. Do not be ashamed of me. We've been together this whole time, and we are spreading the gospel of God. Do not be ashamed. Instead, share the sufferings of the gospel, relying on the power and relying on the power of God. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose. According to His own purpose, which which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So each and every one of us has a purpose. We all choose to have our works in this world. But God, before time began, has set a seed in each and every one of you. And it's our job to be fertilizing it, to be pouring water, to, to help it grow. Right? <clears throat> so he's giving so much encouragement to Timothy. But why is that? What is Timothy feeling right now? He's in, right now, they're separated right now, and Paul is giving so much encouragement to Timothy, because why? Because Timothy right now is kind of scared. He's kind of timid, might be afraid. Why, why, would, why would Timothy might be afraid of Paul or about this, this situation that he's in right now? Does anybody know? He's all alone. He's all alone, right? And he's following... He's following um, Paul's footsteps, and Paul right now, he's in, a, in a, a prison where he might be eaten by rats, or he might be killed, maybe today, not today, maybe the next day or that week, and he's, he's, he's scared for his life. But Paul right now, he's firm in his faith, and he's, he's staying firm, telling him, hey, do not be ashamed of it. Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Be fearful. Have it, sorry. For God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and of sound judgment. He's given so much encouraging words to, to Timothy in this time because he's scared also, because he's following his footsteps. And he's, he's, Timothy's saying, well, this might happen to me, right? This might happen to me. I might be killed. I might be burned. I might be um, hung. You know, where is this going to lead me to? So as we can see that uh, Paul right now, his faith is so firm with God. And he's giving some encouragement to, to Timothy in this in this hard time. <clears throat> and I am uh, chapter one, verse nine. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus what broke time again. This is this has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior Christ, Christ Jesus, who has abolished death. And has brought life and immortality to the light, to light through the gospel. 
For the gospel, I, for the gospel, I was appointed a herd of apostles and and teacher, and that is why I suffer these things. But I'm not ashamed, Paul says, because I know, I know, I have believed in the. I have not believed in. I am persuaded that he has guarded me and entrusted me, trusted to me, trusted to me until that day. So again, we see how Paul is very firm in his in his faith, and that God, and that God has promised him a new life, and that promise, that promise that he's holding on to, is life in Christ Jesus, a new life in heaven. So that's what Paul is clinging on to. <coughs> Chapter 2, it says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of Jesus in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. Commit to faithful men who will who will be able to teach others also. So right now he's telling him, telling him right now that I might not make it. So find men that can also teach the word of God. Faithful men that can help you spread the gospel. And Teach of your word. Share in suffering as a good soldier. Chapter 3. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one suffering, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of civilian life. He seeks to please the recruiter. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer ought to be the first to get the share of the crops. Consider what I say. For the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Keep your attention on Jesus Christ as risen from the dead. And from the dead and descended from David. This is according to the gospel. I suffer for it, Paul says, to the point of being bound like a criminal. To the point of being bound like a criminal. But God's message is not bound. So Paul right now, he's bound like a criminal in the in the sepulchre, in this prison, but God's message is not bound, and he's not passing on that torch to Timothy, telling him, now you need to uh, spread the word of God and the gospel. <clears throat> and this is, uh, okay, this is why I endure all things for the elect, so that is why I may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. This is also this is my second favorite text. I really love reading verse um, 11 through 13, chapter 2. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him in heaven. If we endure with him, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. But if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. <clears throat> Remind them of these things. Remind the people of these things. Charging them before God not to fight about words. This is no way profitable and root and leads to ruin of hearers. So be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not to, does, who doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. Paul right now is telling him, you need to be firm in your in your in your word of God. Find men, preach the gospel, and do not be ashamed of who I am in chains right now. Um, be ashamed of chains. And correctly teaching the word of truth. So you're affirming teaching the word of truth of God to everybody. So the reason I wanted to, I, I chose this message, personally me, um, just open up a little bit of why I chose this message. Because me, myself, I have never done so much um, reading and highlighting on the Bible ever in my entire life. And I really thank John for that because I, 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 don't, I didn't really know God as I do now. Um, and like, my mom also, years and years ago, um, she's been telling, does anybody know the book, um, Footsteps to Christ? 
sure everybody's familiar with that, right? She's been telling me years and years and years, um, uh, order that book, order that book, read it, read it, read it. And I never did it until a couple months ago. And I really started having a relationship with God, a true relationship, talking with Him, like human to human. And it, it was eye-opening. And, um, and I believe that in this time, like, who, who can... Who thinks that we're at the end of times? Like, we can all raise our hand, right? And myself, uh, five years ago, I started seeing myself just decline, decline and decline. Uh, I wasn't talking with God. I would go to church, you know, I would come with my parents, I would come to church, and I'd have service, I'd give offering. And I wouldn't really have that relationship with God, though. And reading this and hearing that, Paul is so firm in his in his uh, his faith and telling telling others and telling Timothy to carry on the word. I felt like I wasn't putting my part in um, and reading and and reading and uh, learning about the gospel because without the word we can't really know who God is. Um, so we need to, we need to all be reading and me myself I wasn't doing that. Um, and this past month, man, it's it's been crazy um, with all this COVID stuff and all those um, those winter winter storms that came um, and the, the past of my grandpa. It, it was been it's been really tough. And by John giving me this message and having the opportunity, I could I could connect with God more and learn more about Him and be diligent and really teach others about uh, the word of the word of God and I felt like we are losing time and I felt like I wasn't putting in um, enough effort into the purpose that God has for me and for us all and so um, I just wanted to leave it leave it at that um, I thank you guys so much for being here and uh, thank you for this message.